continue with our class on number systems uh, so this is our second lecture right so yesterday we were discussing about the basics of number system the number conversions between different bases all those things and we have discussed a few questions also but uh, today what i will do is that i'll start off with some of the specific questions that has been asked in your previous jto exam right the same jto exam which you are going to write a departmental test uh, so the questions which has been asked for different sectors kerala sector uh, madhya pradesh sector i mean all all the different sectors in india so i have selected uh, most of the questions which has been asked from the topic we we have discussed so we'll discuss some of those questions and then we will quickly go on to the next topic and we will discuss the questions uh, which are asked in jto again from those topics also okay so hopefully we will we will be able to cover most of the topics that, i mean we will be able to cover the number systems completely uh, hopefully okay so uh, okay without wasting time so let's let's move on to some of the questions which were asked so i think this was asked in kerala sector in 2013 jto uh, your your exam on the so uh, can, can you quickly if anybody so uh, so uh, i don't think you can use a calculator for the exam i'm not sure about it uh, i'm not i'm not very sure about the use or usage of calculators in your exam so anyway the, these questions might not require you to use a calculator i, I think so uh, i feel so so uh, let's see this one so now look at this question now excuse if me you, if you yeah please okay uh, as per the information available till now calculators are not all allowed okay yes yeah, so please uh, please uh, uh, there is a there is an information uh, the calculators are not allowed in in your exam as per the current information fine uh, so now look at this particular question and uh, so if you can get the answer can you tell me the answer first i mean yesterday we have discussed a lot of uh, we have actually discussed a lot of time in discussing all these things so yeah the answer is option a so if anybody wants a, wants an explanation please tell me i can explain that but uh, if it is straightforward question and if you are able to answer we can quickly move on to the next question that's why i am requesting your participation so i hope all of you are comfortable with this answer a or it's option a right so 21.125 decimal when it is converted to binary you will get exactly this number right okay so uh, we'll move on to the next question and again <clears throat> this is also a question asked in uh, your uh, jto exam uh, i don't remember exactly which circle Kar karnataka circle or something I, I i don't i'm not sure about it but and uh, now let's look at this question in which of the following base systems 123 is not a valid number 123 is not a valid representation which of the base now uh, let me ask you this one see in base 3 system in base 3 system what are the symbols allowed in base 3 system what will be the symbols allowed in base 3 system the symbols allowed will be 0 1 and 2 right so if the symbols allowed in zero base 3 system is 0 1 and 2 then can 123 be a valid representation base 3 system can 120 can 3 appear in a base 3 system right what i mean to say is that if 123 has to be a valid representation your base should be definitely what your base should be definitely greater than 3 right now out of the given options which is which which is not valid which is not a valid valid base for representing 120 for 123 being a valid representation what do you think is it base 3 is it base 3 so is that clear is this clear okay fine so now let's move on to this one and again this is also another question asked for this one the decimal equivalent of the hexadecimal number one afs so can you please answer this first the decimal equivalent of the number one af is 
so 1 a f in hexadecimal so basically you want to convert it into a uh, decimal right so how will you convert this into decimal it is 1 into 16 square plus a into what is the value of a actually the value of a is 10 10 into 16 raised to 1 plus f into and what is the value of f actually it is 15 into 16 raised to 0 Right, so and finally you get this one 256 plus 160 plus 15 and what is the answer 431 the answer is 430 very good no either that's correct the answer is 431 right i hope you i hope it is clear so let's let's move on to the next question okay one second uh yeah now this guy this this is a good question this kind of questions you should be careful the number of uh digit one present it this was asked for i think bihar or some some sector i don't remember exactly the number of digit one present in the binary representation of 3 into 512 plus 7 into 664 plus 5 into 8 plus 3 is the number of ones present in the number of digit one present in the binary representation of this particular number so this is a this is a common question asked in competitive exams and you should be able to uh, write how to write the answer for this one now it's a very common question As, so how do you approach this particular question first of all understand this is what is the number given the number given is 3 into 512 plus 7 into 64 plus 5 into 8 plus i mean i can write it this is 3 but please understand this can be written as 3 into 512 if you think about it 512 is actually 8 cube right plus 7 into 64 is actually 8 square right and plus 5 into 8 raised to 1 plus 3 into 8 raised to 0. Now, you, if you think about the positional weight system, and if you consider 8 as your base, then basically this is nothing but the, the evaluation of a number represented in octal system, because it is 8 cube, 8 square, 8 raised to 1, uh, 8 raised to 0. So, can you tell me which will be that number which is represented in the octal system uh, by, by this particular value? It will be 3, 7, 5, 3, 3, 7, 5, 3 represented in base 8. So, this is actually the number which is given in the question. Now, how do you, so the question asks this, how many ones are in the binary? Now, how will you convert this one to binary? Yesterday, we have seen the conversion of uh, base 8 system to binary. How will you convert that? It's a direct conversion. Now, you will replace 3 with what? You will replace 3 with 0, 1, 1. You will replace your 7 with what? You will replace your 7 with 1, 1, 1. You will replace your 5 with what? You will replace the 5 with 1, 0, 1. You will replace the 3 with what? 0, 1, 1. So, basically, this will be your binary representation. Right? And can you count the number of 1s in this one? The question is asking how many ones are in this representation? How many ones are in the binary representation of this particular number? And this is the binary representation. And how many ones are here? How many ones are here? I think it is nine. So number of ones. The number of ones present is equal to what? Nine. Right. So please uh, remember this, these kind of question. This is commonly asked question. It is asked very frequently in competitive exams. So remember these kind of questions. Okay. So I hope uh, all of you are okay with this one. Right. Is it clear everyone? Okay. Okay. Now. So let's uh, move on to this one. Now look at this one. What is the addition of minus 64 uh, base 10 and 80 base 16? So the question here is asking, what is 
minus 64 base 10 uh, and plus 80 base 16. And they are asking you what is the answer for this one. Now you can approach this question in many ways. That is, uh, they are giving the answer in base 10, 16 or binary, whatever it is. They are giving it in this one. Now one way to approach this question is, say one is given in decimal, one is given in hexadecimal. What you can do is you can convert this one into decimal if you want. This uh, The number given in hexadecimal, you can convert it into decimal first. Then you can do the operation decimal decimal system. Then finally the answer you can convert. If it is required, you can convert the answer into uh, your binary or hexadecimal. That is one way to do that. Or another way to do that is you can actually convert this decimal into hexadecimal and you can perform the addition in hexadecimal format. I mean, that might be required in many questions, in some of the other questions also. So how will you add two numbers in hexadecimal? Suppose I, if I, so I'll come back to this question. So I'll come before that. Let me ask you this question. Suppose, suppose I want to add two numbers in hexadecimal, something like this one. See this. Suppose I ask you, so this is 29 base uh, 16. Say I have 29 uh, base uh, 16. And I want to add this with something like, uh, say, 38. 38 base, again, 16. Now, how will you add these two numbers in the, in the hexadecimal system itself? How will you add these two numbers? in? The, see, you know how to add it in decimal. But how will you add the numbers in hexadecimal? What is 9, nine plus 8? First of all, let us add these two numbers. 9 plus 8. What is 9 plus 8 according to your decimal? Sir, please speak loudly, sir. Okay. So is it uh, is it not audible? So it is sir, audible. Uh, um, slightly more loud, sir. Please. More loud. Okay. I mean. Oh, fine. Okay. So I'm speaking uh, uh, to my full. I'm speaking to my fullest actually. So okay. Anyway, I'll I'll try to increase the. I'll try to increase my volume. Okay. Uh, fine. So uh, it is nine plus eight. And now tell me what is nine plus eight. Now tell me this one. Nine plus eight is what? Nine plus eight is seventeen. Now my my question is actually is seventeen a valid is 17 a valid do, do we have a symbol for 17 in hexadecimal do we have a symbol for 17 in hexadecimal no we don't have a symbol for 17 in hexadecimal so uh, what do you think 17 how how will be 17 represented in hexadecimal what do you think uh, see 15 is actually f now after 15 it will be what 16 will be represented as what in hexadecimal what do you think the decimal 16 will be represented in hexadecimal as 10. 17 will be represented as what? 11. Right? So basically, what you should get here is 11 actually. Right? And in that one, you will place a 1 here. Now, how do you get this 1? Again, let, let me tell you this one. The 7, you have to actually get 17 here, but 17 is actually in hexadecimal, it is 11. So in this 11, you will keep only this 1 here. And this one will be when uh, going as carry to the carry to the next position. Or in other words, you can you can think about this one. If you are getting 70, subtract the base. What is the base of this number system? Base of the number system is what? 16. So subtract 16 from this one. And what is the result? If you subtract the base 16 from this one, what is the result? It is 1. So that 1 will be 1 will be appearing here. And there will be a carry of 1 there will be a carry of one why there will be a carry of one because actually you are getting one but out of that this one is placed here and there is actually a carry so this carry will be actually going to the next position now if you want to get this number one what you can do is that you you take the sum subtract 16 from that one subtract 16 the base you will get the number to be placed here so there is a carry here right and if you add now now add these things what is 1 plus 2 plus 3? What is 1 plus 2 plus 3 here in this position? It is 1. So this is 61 base 
so this will be the addition in hexadecimal right so i hope this this particular idea is clear how to add two hexadecimal numbers right uh, or in any base actually Sup suppose uh, yeah anyway let, let's come to this one now suppose i want to add this one now can you tell me what is 64 in 64 in hexadecimal or before that let, let me give you the uh, the the idea for subtraction also subtraction in hexadecimal or in any base subtraction in hexadecimal right so how will you subtract two numbers in hexadecimal say suppose i give you two numbers something like uh, say uh, 32 right minus so 32 is in hexadecimal say this is 16 minus and there is one more number this is say let, let me tell you this one as uh, something like uh, uh, six say one six six now how will you subtract these two numbers in hexadecimal system it's a without relying on decimal now you have you want to do this in hexadecimal format itself now how will you do this one now can uh, see when you subtract six from two is it directly subtractable i mean can you do this subtraction directly two minus six is it possible directly it is not possible directly so what you usually do is that you take a borrow from here right you take a borrow of one from here and when the borrow is going to this one this three will become what three will become two actually but when this one is going to the next position it will not be going as one see one has a higher power one this is one into 16 right so when this one is going to this two part this will become two plus 16 actually so when this one is going from this position to the last position so along with this two you are adding what you are adding 16 whatever is the base right now you can actually subtract what you can subtract the 6 from 18 and what is subtraction 18 minus 6 can you tell me what is 18 minus 6 so this becomes 18 now after after collecting the borrow after collecting the borrow from the previous position this becomes 18 and what is 18 minus 6 what is 18 minus 6 18 minus 6 is 12 right and 12 that is equal to what that is equal to c in hexadecimal right so this is c right now what is this subtraction 2 minus 1 and what is 2 minus 1 it is 1 c so this will be the number in hexadecimal so this is how you carry out the subtraction in hexadecimal so whenever you want to take a borrow please understand that this borrow will contribute an addition of 16 here okay so just remember that one now you can see this one see uh, now to do this question the best best way to do this one would be i mean can you convert the 64 into hexadecimal can you tell me what is 64 see please understand 64 is nothing but 4 into 16 raised to 1 plus 0 into 16 raised to 0 so basically this is nothing but 40 base 16 right so 64 is nothing but this value so that is nothing but 40 40 base 16 so this is basically what you need to do is that this particular operation that is you have 80 base 16 minus what so there is a negative negative sign here so this negative sign can be represented as subtraction and you want to subtract what you want to subtract 40 base 16 now this subtraction is easy easy because you don't require any borrow here so this will be 0 and 8 minus 4 is 4 so basically your answer will be 40 base 40 base 16 but you don't find an answer like that 40 base 16 in the in the option so can you convert this one to binary this hexadecimal to binary I mean this can be directly done it is 0 1 0 0 and 0 is nothing but 0 0 0 0 so basically this will be your binary number and this is your answer right and you have you have an answer here your answer is this d right so that is that is a way to do it i hope i hope this this is clear this particular 
problem is clear right okay so let's move on let's move on to the next question now see this question this also asks for a jto exam itself so that is why i i told you about that uh, hexadecimal subtraction or a, any base subtraction you should be familiar how to subtract the numbers in any any number system you should be familiar with this one see what what they are asking is uh, they have given lot of options they have given a lot of option lot of operations in the options and they ask you which of the following operations represents e3 base 16 so which of these operations will result in e3 base in hex e3 in hexadecimal which of these operations will result in e3 now this is this is very easy by elim elimination you can you can just try try this one see what is the first just look at the unit just look at the unit place that is enough actually so what about the first one 1 c e plus a2 now can you tell me what will be what will be coming in the unit place can somebody tell me what will be coming in the unit place what is e actually e is 14 e is actually 14 plus 2 what is 14 plus 2 14 plus 2 is 16 and if it is 16 is 16 a valid hexadecimal symbol do we have a valid hexadecimal symbol for 16 no so you just subtract 16 from this one you subtract the base from this one so you have to place a zero here but what do we require here but in the question we require a three at the unit place so definitely you can conclude that a is not the answer right and what about the option b can you tell me about b it is 1 b c minus d e right so what, what will you get at the see just look at the unit place alone in the unit place what will you get see uh, it is 12 minus 14 correct 12 minus 14 is it possible is it directly possible without taking a borrow you have to take a borrow now if you take a borrow from here to here this will become what this will become 12 plus c is 12 12 plus 16 and 12 plus 16 is what 28 right so you have to actually subtract 28 minus 14 what is 28 minus 14 what is 28 minus 14 it is again 14 right and 14 is nothing but e itself so what you get is e here and do do we need e here or something else see we, we require 3 here we are getting e here so b is not the correct answer i mean yeah, B is not the correct answer, right? I hope this is this is making sense to you, <laughs> right? And what about the uh, option three? Uh, I mean, C option. What will what will come at the unit place to make it fast? I mean, option C two B C uh, minus one d e again again what will be the this again c minus e c minus e will result in what if you take the borrow this will again result in e so you can immediately uh, discard what discard c also uh, because we we want a three here so definitely this will not result in three so that's also done and what about d uh, so you can see that it is two zero zero minus 1 1 d now if you think about this one you cannot subtract 0 minus d it is not possible so you have to take a borrow from here but there is no borrow here i mean there is no number to be taken from here so you take a borrow from here first so that this will become what this will become 0 plus 16 this will become 0 plus 16 then you take a borrow from here so that this will become what this will become 16 minus 115 so basically this will become f right after doing this one and this one now this will become what this will become 0 plus 16 and what is 16 minus d what is 16 minus d can you tell me what is 16 minus d it is 3 right so you will get 3 here right and if you want you can do the other ones also what is f minus 1 this is f here f minus 1 is what f minus 1 is e and the, from this 2 actually 1 is taken so there will be only 1 remaining here so this was 2 
and when you take a one this will become one and one minus one is zero so this will be e3 uh, and that is exactly what we want in the question right so e3 is what we want and we are getting e3 right so the right option would be option d right so this was asked in one of the uh, madhya pradesh circle or something so you can expect these kind of questions so please be familiar with this uh, hexadecimal subtraction these kind of things okay so we'll move on to the next question and what about these kind of uh, how to how to do this kind of question uh, again you can you can look at the uh, unit units place see this one what they are asking is there is 135 some some unknown base x right 144 unknown base x and everything is in some unknown base x so in some base this this is valid 135 plus 144 gives you 323 now it it may not be in decimal it is in some some base so which in which base this particular operation is valid or this particular equation is valid that is i want to get what when i add 135 i don't know what base it is and when you add it with another number in the same base 144 what you should so let us let us concentrate on the unit so they are saying that you are getting 323 in that particular base right now tell me this one when you add 5 and 4 what is the actual result you are getting uh, so in decimal what is the result when you add 5 plus 4 5 plus 4 the result is 9 but instead of 9 you are getting a 3 here so that means you are subtracting when you subtract the base from here you will get the number which is required here so what should be this base x that has to be subtracted from 9 to get a 3 here? So it has to be 6, right? So 9 minus 6 will give you what? 9 minus 6 will give you 3. So the base has to be what? The base has to be 6, right? Okay. So, so I think that is clear, right? Because when you add 5 plus 4, uh, you are getting instead of 9 you are getting 3 so if you want to get 3 then this 9 from the 9 you have to subtract the base right so which which base will give you 3 here so the base 6 will give you 3 here right so the base x is actually uh, 6 okay fine now uh, this is another question and this is straightforward it is one they are asking to convert this number to uh, hexadecimal so there is one one zero one zero zero one one so this is basically in base two so what is the hexadecimal conversion so what is this particular symbol what is this particular symbol so what is one one zero one <coughs> what is one one zero one yeah it is d right and what is zero zero one one Right, so that is option A. Okay, so the, the these were some of the questions uh, from the topics we have discussed in the uh, last class. Now we will move on to the new topics, and after covering the topics, we will discuss uh, more questions. Okay, so let us move on to this. Uh, uh, let's move on to a new topic. Please listen. Something known as complements of numbers. Complements right so before going into two's complement and one's complement let me just give you what is meant by uh, suppose you have a base r system base uh, general base r system right and if if uh, there is a number n there is a number n which is represented in base r system right uh, which is having which is having which is having n digits in it n digits in it so when i say n this n could be something like 123 and your base could be something like 6 right so that is the meaning of this one now this has got how many digits this has got three digits so your n will be equal to what your n will be equal to 3 so that is the meaning of what i am saying okay 
so in that particular case we define two complements actually we define the complements like this one there are two kinds of complements complements of this number one is known as arc complement and how is arc complement calculated arc complement is calculated something like this one that is if r is the base r complement is calculated as r raised to n if n is the number of digits what you do is that take r raised to n then subtract your number subtract the given number from it right r raised to n minus n is your r complement and what is r minus there is another complement which is r minus 1's complement what is r minus 1's complement r minus 1's complement is r raised to n minus 1 minus n r raised to n minus 1 minus n so that is r minus 1's complement of a given number n right this is the complements of the number n in base r system there are two complements r's complement and r minus 1's complement depending on which number system you are talking about so if you look at decimal if you look at the decimal number system decimal system there are two uh, there are two comp one is tens complement see base is r right r is equal to 10 so there is tens complement and there is nines complement and how do you find the tens complement see suppose i ask you what is the tens complement of what is tens complement of say 7 what is tens complement of 7 from the direct definition 7 is your number and 10 is the base i mean the base actually so what you do is that and how many digits your number has 7 has got only one digit 7 has got only one digit so how to find the tens complement it is 10 raised to 1 and why this one because 7 contains only one digit so 10 raised to 1 minus the number itself 7 so what will this result in what is 10 minus 7 it is 3 and what is what is 9's complement what is 9's complement of 9's complement of 7 what is 9's complement of 7 it is 10 raised to 1 minus 1 right minus 7 which is nothing but you have 9 here 9 minus 7 that is equal to what 2 that is 9's complement of 7 now if i ask you something like what is 10's complement of so so basically can you tell me what is the relation between r's complement and r minus 1's complement is there any relation between these two what is the relation between r's complement and r minus 1's complement can you see that r's complement is nothing but r minus 1's complement plus 1 that is if you can know r minus 1's complement then if you add 1 to this one what will happen suppose you add 1 to this one this will be cancelled so you will get r's complement so do we have a relation like this do we have a relation like r's complement is equal to what r's complement is equal to r's complement is equal to r minus 1's complement plus 1 so just remember this this one just remember this result r's complement is equal to r minus 1's complement plus 1 in any number system any base number system is always valid r's complement is equal to r minus 1's complement now let me ask you this one can you tell me 9's complement of what is 9's complement of uh, 365 base 10 so how do you find 9's complement of 365 base 10 how do you find this one now according to the basic definition let, let's look at this one what is the 9's complement of 365 this 634 that's correct now how do you get that one now to get the 9's complement there is an easy trick i mean the definition wise it is something like this one 10q why 10q because there are three digits in this one so 10q minus 1 minus 365 so this will result in what this will result in 999 9, 
minus 365. Now, this is very easy to get. I mean, this will result in what? 9 minus 5 will result in 4. 9 minus 6 will result in 3. 9 minus 3 will result in 6. So, if you want to get the 9th complement, it is way, if you want to get the r minus 1's complement, it is very easy. What you need to do is that take the individual complement of each digit. Take the individual complement of each. What is the 9th complement of 5? What is the 9th complement of 5? Subtract 5 from 9. So, you get 4. What is the 9th complement of 6? What is the 9th complement of 6? 3. What is the 9th complement of 3? 6. So, the overall ninth complement will be what? The overall ninth complement will be 634. Now, once you get ninth complement, it is very easy to get the tenth complement. So, what is tenth complement? Tenth complement of tenth complement is equal to you get you get the ninth complement first because that is very easy to get. You can get the ninth complement very easy by taking the individual complements of each digit. Then you have this ninth complement, right? So this is your ninth complement. And you add a 1 to that, right? So that is what we, we have seen here. That is, if you want to get uh, R's complement, you can take R minus 1's complement because that is easy to get. Then add 1 to that. If you add 1 to R minus 1's complement, you will get R's complement. So, you can take the ninth complement. Ninth complement is easy to get. Then, they add 1 to that. So, what, what will be your answer? It will be 635 base 10. Right? So, this is the basic idea of what? This is the basic idea of your uh, ninth complement and tenth complement. I mean, R, R complement and R minus co 1 complement. Now, let us look at what, what happens in the binary. In binary, so, your base is what? Your base is equal to what? Your base is equal to 2. So, what will be the complements? What will be the complements available in binary? Can you tell me? 1 is 2's complement. And another one is 1's complement. Right? So, your base is equal to 2. So, you will have R, R's complement and R minus 1's complement. Now, one's complement is much easier to get. How to get one's? So let me let me start with one's complement. Then two's complement can be obtained by take one's complement first, add one to that. So that will give you what two's complement, right? So now one. Uh, let, let's take an example of this one. How, how to get the one's complement? Or say I'll give you a number one zero one one. So uh, I need I need the one's complement of this one. Now can you tell me what is the one's complement of this one? What is a one's complement? Uh, one's complement. Now, if you want to get the one's complement, it is very easy. We have seen in the uh, ninth complement. What you need to do is that take every individual bit, take every individual bit, take the complement of it. You will get the one's complement of the entire number. What is the complement of one? The complement of one is zero. What is the complement of one? The complement of 1 is 0. That basically you are subtracting from what? You are subtracting this whole number from 1, 1, 1. So basically you are doing this one. So doing this one is nothing but taking the complement of this particular digit, right? So 0, 0. And what is the complement of this number? Zero. Uh, this digit, 1. What is the complement of this, this digit? It is 0. What is the complement of this digit? It is 1. And what is the complement of this digit? 0. So this will be the 1's. I mean, this is the one's complement, right? Right, and from this one, you can actually get the two's complement of this number. What is the two's complement? The two's complement of this number. You can add a one to this one. So you can add a one. So if you add a one to this one, what will be your two's complement? One, zero, one, zero. 1, 0. So, this will be your 2's complement. So, this will be the 2's complement. <laughs> right? So, this is how you find the 1. See, for getting the 1's complement, it is very simple. If a binary number is given, and if you want to find the 1's complement of that binary number, just invert the bits. Just invert your individual bits. You will get the 1's complement. And you can add a 1 to that to get the 2's complement. 
now i will give you a shortcut to get the tools complement directly there is a shortcut way to get the and very popular method actually so a shortcut to get the tools complement because you will be dealing with tools complement a lot when you deal with computers uh, computer arithmetic basically deal with machines uh, so shortcut for finding uh, tools complement to uh, complement for a you can actually use this method you can find one complement and you can add one that is that is a very uh, one method of do, getting the one, two's complement but there is actually a shortcut which is very popular actually so basically suppose you are given uh, given some number say uh, 1 0 0 1 1 0 2 1 0 0 say suppose i want to find the two's complement of this one right so i want to find two's complement not one one's complement is simple you can invert every bit you will get the one's complement now for getting two's complement listen here see this one what you do is that you scan from the you scan from the very right you start from here you start from here and you scan towards the left you scan this number towards the left and when you are scanning until until you see the first one until you meet the first one right so you keep writing the digits as it is now you are scanning from here now tell me what is the first digit the first digit is zero so you have in you have in met a one so keep write this bit as it is now what is the next digit next digit is zero have you met a one yet have you met any one no you you are scanning from the right and you scan towards the left and when you are scanning towards the left you you keep scanning until you meet the first one right until you meet the first one you keep writing the bits as it is so this will be zero right and here you meet the first one and that one also you write as it is right now this is your first one this is your first encounter with one this is your first one right first time now once you get the one once you get the first one then every remaining bit you take the complement of this bit don't write it as it is take the complement so every bit after this one you take take the complement so write this one as one write this one as zero write this one as zero write this one as one write this one as one write this one as zero so this will be the two's complement so this will be the two's complement of the given number right so this this will be your answer so is that is that method clear is it clear right so what about the two's complement of this number what what about the two yes the two's complement of this number if you if you do the same method if you look at the method we have discussed now it will be see you scan from the left you will get it as what 0 0 0 0 and again 1 so you will get exactly the same number so the two's complement of this one this particular binary is same as the binary that number itself right so please remember that <coughs> right so please remember this particular thing like and in in one of the question papers uh, there there is a there is a question and in hexadecimal you have to so that is about binary you have one's complement and two's complement uh, two's complement in one of your jto questions it is asked like uh, in hexadecimal system uh, can you think about what are the different complements you can have what are the different possible complements you can have one is 16th complement because the base is 16 and the other one is what other one is 15th complement but 15th complement is not written as 15th complement usually it is written as f complement f complement right oh, sorry complement now there was a question actually to find the f complement of hexadecimal number so how do you get the f's complement of hexadecimal number so the the question was something like this i think they have given some question like uh, a uh, 
C, something like this one. Uh, yeah, A to uh, six, I think. I I, I don't. I, I'm not sure about what was the number. So maybe A to three. Okay. So this is your base, and they have asked about the what is the F complement. What is F complement? They can very well ask you the sixteenth uh, complement also. What is the F complement of this number? And how to get the F complement of this number? Please understand this is R minus one's complement, and getting R minus one's complement is very easy. What you need to do is that this is your number A two three, right? Subtract it from what? Subtract it from F F F, or just take the complement individual F complement. Subtract this number from F F F. Minus a two three. That is, subtract three from f, subtract two from f, subtract a from f, and you have to do a hexadecimal subtraction. You have to do the subtraction hexadecimal, right? So what will you get? What is f? Can you tell me what is f minus three? What is f minus three? Fifteen minus three. What is fifteen minus three? Fifteen minus three is twelve. And what is twelve in hexadecimal? C, right? Is it C? Right. And what is F minus two? What is F minus two? D, right? And what is F minus A? What is F minus A? So this is your F complement. So F complement is equal to. This one. Now, if they ask you what is 16's complement, so this implies what is 16's complement. 16's complement is equal to. You can add a one to this one, and if you add a one, say if you get f's complement, you can add a one to f's complement to get the 16's complement. And if you add a one to this one, what will happen to this c? C will become what? This will become 5d. D, right? So this will be the 16's complement, right? So please remember about this F's complement. Please understand what what, what you are actually doing, right? You you are individually taking the com F's complement of each digit, and that is very easy to get, right? So please remember this one. There there were questions in your question paper. That is why I just discussed this. Okay. So now we have seen the complements, uh, complements of numbers in different base, right? So in all the bases you can define complements, and there are many uses of these complements. One is in actually doing arithmetic, computer arithmetic becomes much easier using two's complement and one's complement, and it's easy to implement also, right? And another much much more important reason is actually representation of numbers. The the I'm I am talking about the what is the advantage of these complements, or what is the use of the complements. That is nothing but representation of numbers, especially negative numbers. Representation of numbers. Uh, representation of signed numbers. Let, let's say signed. When I say signed numbers, it can be positive numbers and negative numbers. Now let me ask you something here. This one will come come back to this one. Suppose I tell you I have got three bits. I have got three bits. Now how many how many numbers I can represent? So how many unsigned numbers I can represent using three bits without any unsigned numbers using three bits? See these are the combinations I have, right? One zero zero one zero one 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 zero, right and I think did I miss something? Yeah, one, one, one. So these are the combinations, and you can represent from zero to what? Zero to seven, right? Zero to seven. So th these are the numbers you can represent using unsigned, unsigned representation, right? Uh, using these three bits. But uh, please understand how do uh, suppose we want to represent negative numbers or also for our application, right? Whatever application you are dealing with. Suppose we want to represent Uh, negative numbers also. How will you represent them in computers, or how will you store them in computers? Now, computers don't understand this negative negative symbol, right? Negative. When I say negative five, it doesn't understand what 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 does this mean actually. 
now the negative numbers has to be so stored as one of the string one of the one of the binary string so what you will actually do is that some of the strings you will reserve for positive numbers some of the strings you will reserve for negative numbers when you want to represent positive number as well as negative numbers what you usually do with three bits suppose uh, the memory size or or the register register size you have is three bits and if you want to cover negative numbers also the only thing you can do is that i mean allocate some numbers for allocate some of the strings for positive numbers allocate some other strings for negative numbers according to some well defined rule right so that is what we are going to do according to some well defined rule we are going to assign some strings to what some strings to positive numbers and some strings to negative numbers now in that fashion you have got three different three different rules or three different number representation formats uh, so this is for representing signed numbers that is both positive and negative so i am i am taking the example of three bit numbers here and i will generalize i will generalize it to an n bit okay as of now i am i am just uh, taking three bit numbers so there are three I, i told you there are three representations and the first one is known as sign magnitude form sign magnitude representation sign magnitude representation and the next one is known as ones complement form ones complement representation and the last one and and superior to the other two is known as and i'll tell you why it is superior the two uh, the two's complement representation the two's complement representation of positive and negative numbers Two's complement. These are representation schemes, right? So, so there are some well-defined rules for this. Right? Two's complement scheme. Right? Now let us first look at sign magnitude form. It is straightforward. It's, it's a very simple one. You have got three bits, right? And if you want to, if you want to represent a number, positive or negative number, please understand the first bit will be explicitly reserved for sign. The first bit will be explicitly reserved for what? representing the sign of the number if it is zero we will treat it as what we will treat it as a positive number if the first bit is zero we will represent it as a or we will treat it as a positive number if the first bit is one we will treat it as a negative number right so the first symbol the first symbol decides whether it is positive or negative the second two bits will give you the magnitude of the number second two bits will give you the magnitude of the number right so it is straight forward let let me write, write this one here actually so let me write this sign magnitude this is one's complement and there is two's complement format two's complement right now let us look one by one sign magnitude form so i want to represent zero will be represented as what as i am taking three bits for for an example uh, for for this explanation purpose i am just taking three so zero will be represented as 0 0 one will be represented as 0 0 1 two will be represented as zero as as the normal binary 0 1 0 Three will be represented as what? Three will be represented as zero one one. So up to this one, this is fine because the first digit is zero. So all these numbers are what? All these numbers are positive numbers. So up to this one, the sign magnitude representation is the. This is the positive numbers. Sign magnitude representation for the positive numbers. Now the remaining numbers you can actually represent. So let us start start with negative. How will you represent negative three in sign magnitude form? how will you represent negative 3 in sign magnitude form the first thing you notice that it is negative number so your first bit has to be 0 or 1 what has to be that your first bit has to be what if it is negative 3 your first bit has to be what your first bit has to be your first bit has to be 1 now after what what is the magnitude of your number the magnitude of your number is 3 and the 3 magnitude can be represented by what the magnitude 3 is represented by 1 1 right so this is how you encode encode minus 3 the first bit is reserved for this side and 3 is actually represented by these two bits i mean the magnitude is represented by these three bits 
so this this encoding is straightforward the first bit for the size second two bits for the magnitude right and if it if it is four bits uh look like seven yeah i mean this look like seven in unsigned numbers i mean if, if you are not using negative if you don't want to represent negative numbers then one 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 will represent what binary in binary it will represent seven it is unsigned so when you are when you are dealing with unsigned numbers one 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 actually represents seven only it is binary seven but this is a representation scheme that is once you agree that once you and all the entire world agrees that you are operating in sign magnitude form then it is a it is like a code you know that one 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 stands for minus three it is a mutual agreement right that is you are you are working in this environment where one 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 is actually the encoding for negative three so when you see one 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 you should decode it as what minus three right so it's a representation scheme and how will you encode minus two how will you encode minus two in sign magnitude form the first bit has to be one and what has to be the second two bits one one zero very good one one zero what about negative one it is one it is one zero one fine uh, up to this it is fine i mean ev everything this is fine but uh, how how many how many bit strings are utilized here can you tell me how many bit strings are utilized have we utilized all the bit strings which is possible using three bits have have we utilized ev every bit, bit bit string possible every combination have we done with every combination which is possible using three bits no there is one more one more possibility what is that last possibility you could have you could have used there is one more uh, bit string which is 100 now can you tell me which one what will this number represent according to the rules we have defined for sign magnitude according to the rules we have defined for sign magnitude how will this read how will you decode this one you will decode you will decode this one as negative 0 right this is positive 0 now you see a major disadvantage of sign magnitude representation but actually these two combinations are actually based i mean not both combination actually there are two two alternative representation for zero which is not actually required there is no need for negative zero actually there is only one zero is required but unfortunately according to the rules of the sign magnitude there appears two zeros in that right so this can be one of your exam question that is the question can be two two duplicate zeros a duplicate for zero appears in which of the representation so it could be side magnitude and i mean it, it actually happens in one's complement also uh, we will see that so please understand in side magnitude form there are two representations for zero one is positive zero and negative zero which is totally not unwanted right so two representations for the same number two representations for zeros so this is a major disadvantage right so there are duplicate representations for zeros so that is major disadvantage of sign magnitude form please understand there are duplicate zeros present in this one right so that is a major disadvantage now i'll come to the ra range of numbers you can and uh, looking at this one can you tell me what is the uh look looking at this one what what is the range of numbers you have range of numbers you have represented using uh three bits using using three bits what is the range of numbers you have represented using three bits can you tell me what is the least number you have what is the least number negative three you have represented what is the maximum number you have represented three so what is the range you can say it is negative three to negative 3 to plus 3 and yeah that, that's correct i mean hari krishna that's correct and basically you can understand negative 3 is nothing but it is actually two i mean uh, negative this is basically 2 square minus 1 so negative 2 square minus 1 2 two square minus 1 okay i i'll give you a general expression for this one and just taking this example right since you have three bits this will come to be 
this will be 3 minus 1. For n, n bits, I will give you the general expression. Okay. Now, uh, before that, uh, let me come to this once complement representation. In once complement representation, let us look at what is the what is the rule actually. And the rule is something like this one. So you can have a demarcation here. The demarcation is for positive numbers and negative numbers. And please understand whatever is your whatever is your format, whether it is sign magnitude format, ones complement format, or twos complement format, the positive numbers are always represented the same. The positive numbers are always represented in the same format in all the three formats. Whether it is sign magnitude, ones complement, or twos complement, zero is represented as what? Even in ones complement format, zero is represented as zero zero zero. One is represented as 0, 0, 001. 2 is represented as 0, 010. 0. And 3 is represented as 0, 011. 1, 1. Now, coming to the negative numbers, there is a difference. What is the difference? In sign magnitude form, it was very explicit how to get the negative number. In once complement, it is not so straightforward. It, it is something like the rule is something like this. If you want to encode for negative 3, if you want to get the representation for negative 3, what you do is that go to its positive now go to the positive representation of 3 what is a what is positive how is positive 3 represented as positive 3 is represented as 0 1 1 now take the now take the ones complement of this take the ones complement of this binary string can you tell me what is the ones complement of this binary string what is the ones complement just invert the bits so what will you get if you invert the bits, you will get it as 1, 0, 0. And this is the representation for negative 3 in once complement format. So that is the rule, that is the rule for once complement representation for negative numbers. Right? So if you want to represent negative 3, you go to plus 3 first and look at the code for plus 3. Just apply once complement to that one. That will give you the representation for negative 3. Right? Now, similarly, if you want to get the representation for negative 2, if you want to get the representation for negative 2, you go to plus 2. For, this is plus 2. You go to this combination, apply ones complement to this one. What is ones complement of 0, 1, 0? 1, 0, 1. So, 1, 0, 1 actually represents the negative 2 in ones complement format. Right? And if you want the representation for negative 1, you go to plus 1. 0, 0, 001 take the ones complement of 0, 0, 001 what is what is the ones complement of 0, 0, 001 sorry it is 110 1, right it is 110 1, 1, now let me ask you this question uh, is there is there a, now now we have coded for what we have coded for 1 2 3 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 now is there any string missing in this one out of three bits, which is a string that is missing? One, one, one is missing. Now, can you tell me which which will be the which will be the decoding for this one? Which which number has to be encoded like this? One, one, one. So when you see something like one, one, one in ones complement format, how will you how will you understand this number? How will you decode this number? I mean, you can see that the first bit if it, if the first bit is one, it is always a negative number, right? So this has to be a negative number. So this is a negative number. And if you want to get the magnitude of this number, what you do? You take the ones complement of this number. What is the ones complement of 111? What is the ones complement of 111? The ones complement of 111 is 000. zero, zero. And that is the magnitude. So this also represents what? Negative zero. Right? So even in ones complement, that problem is still persisting. Still, still it remains. Right? In side magnitude form, there were two representations for zeros. Even in ones complement form, there is two representation for zero. Right? So this is positive zero. This is negative zero, which is totally unwanted, which is not needed. Right? So there are two representations for zeros in even ones complement form also. So here also you have got duplicate zeros. Right? Now, so uh, what are the numbers you can actually represent from here? Uh, so in ones complement, in ones complement format. So this is for sign magnitude. So 
So in one's complement, so in one's complement format, what is the range of numbers you can represent? It is still negative negative three to plus three, right? So negative two square minus one to plus two square minus one. So that is that is the range of numbers you can represent in one's complement format also, right? So yeah, so just just remember this range also. I'll give you a general expression for that range. Now coming back to this one. Now tell me what about two's complement? And now what is the rule for two's complement representation? Again, please understand. For positive numbers, there is no difference. Whatever you were representing using sign magnitude, exactly the same expression. For zero, it will be represented as zero zero zero. I mean positive zero. I mean positive numbers from zero. For 1, it is 0, 0, 1. There is no difference for the positive numbers. Up to 3, there is no difference. In side magnitude, 1's complement or 2's complement, there is absolutely no difference in the representation. So this will be 0, 1, 0. And finally, this one will be 0, 1, 1. Now, when it comes to the negative part, there is a difference. There is a difference in the rule. So in the 1's complement, what we actually did was, if you want to encode for minus 3, you actually went to plus 3 first. Then plus 3, you have taken the 1's complement of plus 3. What, whatever is the binary for plus 3, you have taken the 1's complement of plus 3 to get the representation for negative 3. Here what you do is that, you go, see if you want to encode for minus 3 in 2's complement format, what you do is that, you go to plus 3 first, you go to plus 3, and you take the 2's complement of that. And can you tell me what is the 2's complement of this binary? What is, what is the 2's complement of this binary? You can use the shortcut I have, I have given you. So starting from the left, you scan the number. So there is a 1 here. And you have met the first one. You have already met with the first one. So inver invert all the other bits. So when you invert all the other bits, this will be 0. This will be 1. So this is the 2's complement. So this will be the representation for negative. This is your negative 3. So this is, again, this is 0. This is 1. So this is 2. This is, so this is 3, right? So this is negative 3. And how will you represent negative 2 now? How will you represent negative 2? You go to plus 2 first. And plus 2 is this one, 0, 1, 0. Take the 2's complement of that one. What is the 2's complement of 0, 1, 0? It is 1, 1, 0. Very good. It is 1, 1, 0. So that is your negative 2. And how will you get the negative 1? So if you want to get the negative 1, so go to plus 1 first. Plus 1 is this one. Take the 2's complement of plus 1. I mean 0, 0, 1. What is that? It is 1, 1, and 1. So that is your negative 1 right now is there is there any is there any uh, string missing here i mean which which is a string missing can you tell me there is one string missing th th there is one string missing which is a string missing here is one zero zero now can you tell me what will this this representation uh, uh, what will this string represent according to the rules of two's complement representation please understand if the first bit is one Always it has to represent a negative number. This has to represent a negative number. Right? So definitely it is a negative number. So this is something like uh, neg negative or something. Now how will you get the magnitude of this number? If you want to get the magnitude of this number, how did you get the magnitude? See, you get the magnitude by taking the complement, right? See, minus 2 you got by taking the 2's complement of this one. So if you take a complement of this one, you will exactly get this one, the magnitude. So if you want to get the magnitude of this particular number, 1, 0, 0, so obviously it's a negative number because the first digit is 1, so it is negative. And if you want to get the magnitude, what you will do is that you take the 2's complement of this one. What is the 2's complement of this number? What is the 2's complement of 1, 0, 0? What is the 2's complement of 1, 0, 0? Yeah, you, you already know that. The 2's complement of 1, 0, 0 is 1, 0, 0 itself. Now tell me what is this number? Tell me what is the magnitude of this number, 1, 0, 0. What is the magnitude of this number? It is 4. 
So according to the rules we have defined for two complements, this has to represent what? This has to represent minus 4. Now you see the obvious, obvious advantage here. There are no duplicate zeros here. There are no duplicate zeros. Every, every binary string is fully utilized. There is an efficient utilization of every possible string. So here these two strings are actually waste. I mean, one of these strings is wasted, right? I mean, this is not used for any useful representation. But in this particular case, two's complement, every distinct bit strings are used for representing distinct number, right? So you, you have represented from 0 to 3, and you have represented the numbers from negative 4 to negative 1. So you have the representation for even negative 4 also. And there are no duplicate zeros in 2's complement. So no duplicate zeros. No duplicate zeros in 2's complement representation. Now tell me what is the range, range here? What is the range you have got? Negative 4 to negative 4 to plus 3, right? So negative 4 to plus 3. So what is the range you have got using so 2's complement? 2's complement represents so this is representation scheme. This is a representation scheme. And in 2's complement format. In two's complement format, what is the number numbers you are getting? It is negative four to plus three, but this can be written as what? This can be written as negative two square, negative two square two plus two square minus one. Right? This plus plus. So this is a, this is this is for three bits. When it is three bits, it is negative two square minus one two plus two square minus one. Uh, yeah, uh, and what happens? What is the range range using n bits? Suppose you have yeah, n bits in your memory, n bits in your computer. Then what will be the range of numbers you can represent using n n bits? Range using n bits. What is the range using n bits? So can you tell me for sign magnitude format? If it is n bits, if it was 3 bits, if it was 3 bits, it was negative 2 square 2. See, the, you, can, you can track this exponent. The exponent is 2 when it is 3 bits, right? So this can be written as negative of, so please understand, it is negative of, negative of, please, please remember this one. This may be asked in your exam. 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 1, 2 plus 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 1, right? Now, you, you can compare with this one. You can compare with 3 bits. You can compare with 3 bits. You can, you can easily understand this is a valid expression. I mean, this has to be the valid expression because one, one bit is actually gone for psi. So there, there can be only 2 raised to n minus 1 bits remaining, right? So, yeah. And uh, this one, what about the, what about one's complement range? One's complement format range, exactly same as that of side magnitude. Exactly the same as that of the side magnitude representation. So, so I'm just writing it as this. That is exactly the same as that of the side magnitude representation. What about two's complement format? What is the range? What is the difference here? What is the range of numbers you can represent using n bits in two's complement format? There will be an additional negative number. There will be an additional negative number you can actually represent. So this will be negative of 2 raised to n. 2. Sorry, negative. I'm sorry. Negative of 2 raised to n minus 1. 2. plus 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 1. The only difference is that you can represent negative 4 also. If you remember this one, you were representing negative 4 also. Right? Okay. Fine. So this will be the range for uh, range of numbers using 
uh, in different formats a different so you have to remember this one okay remember this particular range the range of uh, numbers in different uh, representation schemes okay and also remember about the uh, encoding and decoding of this uh, two complement representation one complement representation etc okay so i think it is clear it's clear for everyone right so if it is clear uh, let's move on to uh, a new topic which is something known as uh, decimal codes okay we'll move on to another codes which is known as decimal codes it is not a number system it is a code it's a decimal codes and using decimal codes you can actually uh, make new number systems and it might not be positionally weighted number system it will be something else now what is meant by this decimal codes decimal codes is nothing but how many digits are there in decimal how many digits are there in decimal i have got nine numbers right uh, z z i mean 10 10 symbols 0 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 right so these are the these are the digits available for me now what i do is that uh, what is decimal code is that there is something known as 8421 uh, encoding right 8421 encoding what i do is that for each of this digit for see this is only from 0 to 9 after 9 after 9 i am not encoding anything right please understand for 0 i will just give it as 0 0 0 for 1 i will give the actual binary 0 0 1 for 2 i will give it as 0 0 1 0 for 3 i will give it as 0 0 1 1 actually it is like the normal binary nothing else right 4 is uh, 0 1 0 0 5 is 0 1 0 1 and 6 is 0 1 1 0 7 is 0 1 1 1 and 8 is uh, 1 0 0 0 9 is 1 0 0 1 okay so this is 1 1 4 see what I, what are you actually doing is for every decimal symbol this is decimal symbol i'm coding it i'm coding it using some binary string it can be a 8421 code or it can be something known as a 2421 code that is something else but uh, much popular than that is something known as uh, an xs3 format x uh, you might have heard about this xs3 coding xs3 uh xs3 encoding Th that is actually a decimal code and what is decimal code is if you want to encode zero what you do is that you add 3 to this one what is 0 plus 3 0 plus 3 is see you add 3 to this particular number right then what is the binary representation for that particular number 0 plus 3 0 plus 3 is 3 and what is the binary for 3 what is the binary for 3 Zero zero one one. So zero zero one one will be the code used for zero in XS three format. So in XS three format, the code used for zero will be zero zero one one, right? And what will be the code used for one? Can you tell me what will be the code used for one? Zero one zero zero, right? What will be the code used for two? now there is a very important property of xs3 which which will be asked in your exam please remember there is a very very important property of xs3 code which makes it so so special right so 0 101 and what what will be the what will be the binary i mean what will be the xs3 representation for 3 the the decimal symbol 3 how will you represent it what will be the representation 0 11 0 what will be the representation for 4 yeah make it fast it is 0 1 1 1 and what will be the representation for 5 representation for 5 will be i mean it will be 1 0 0 right you add 3 then encoded binary now 6 6 it will be 1 0 0 1 and 7 it will be what 7 it will be 7 plus 3 is what 7 plus 3 is 10 and 10 is 1 0 1 0 right and this is uh, 8 is what 8 is uh, uh, 8 plus 3 so 1 0 1 and 9 is what 1 1 0 0 right so this is actually xs3 format uh, this is how you encode the 
decimal symbols using uh, 8421. Uh, this is sometimes known as BCD. We will come to that 8421. And this is XS3 format. Now, the both of these are decimal, I mean the encoding scheme for decimal symbols. Now, how will you represent higher numbers in uh, higher numbers? Suppose you want to represent suppose you want to represent something known as there is something known as a bcd bcd representation of numbers bcd bcd which is also known as binary coded decimal binary coded decimal this is one of the uh, uh, num number system non, non weighted number systems which we actually use in uh, use for representing uh, uh, different quantities Suppose in BCD, suppose you want to express uh, 120, say, say, let me ask you 14, right? You have 14, right? Can you tell me what is a binary representation for 14? What is a binary representation for 14? What is a binary representation? 110, right? But same 14. If you want to represent it in BCD, suppose you want to represent this in BCD format. So what you actually do is that you don't do it like binary binary encodings. So what you do is that you know the by uh, you know the uh, decimal code for this one eight four two one code for what is the eight four two one code for four? What is the eight four two one code for four actually? What, what is this one? This code, right? So basically what you do is that each digit is each digit is encoded by its corresponding decimal code. And what is the decimal code for 4? It is 0, 1, 0, 0. And what is the code for 1? What is the code for 1? The code for 1 is 0, 0, 1. So this will be the encoding scheme in BCD, BCD numbers. For BCD format, the encoding for 14 will be what you will do is that see please understand one has a one has a binary string binary encoding so you will write that here you will write that 001 here four also has a binary encoding that is 0100 and you will write it side by side just just like you are writing your numbers you are writing 14 you take the symbol for one you take the symbol for 14 right so that will be the bcd encoding for 14 what will be the xs3 encoding for 14 xs3 encoding again the same thing xs3 encoding what is xs3 what is xs3 encoding for one the symbol one what is xs3 encoding for symbol one the xs3 encoding for symbol one is 0100 right so you will just write it as what you will write write it as 01 0, 0. That is for 1. 1 is done. And what is XS3? What is XS3 encoding for 4? The XS3 encoding for 4 is 0, 1, 1, 1. Right? So you will write the XS3 encoding for 4 here. 0, 1, 1, and 1. Right? So this is the XS3 encoding for 14. Right? And it is completely different from your binary encoding. Right? This is a positional weighted system. These were not positionally weighted system because you can't assign some 60, I mean, you can't assign 2 raised to some 7 or something to this position. That, that's not correct, right? I mean, individually for the symbols, there is positional weight still assigned. But when it comes to a bigger numbers, there is no positional weight. There is no meaning for positional weight here, right? So uh, this is the encoding for 14. And... And similarly, the same thing goes for what I mean, three bit number. I mean, three digit number. Suppose you have five sixty three, and what will be the BCD representation? BCD representation of five sixty three. Can you tell me what will be the BCD representation for five sixty three in decimal? So you have got three symbols, and for each symbol, you write the binary binary encoding for that. So five is nothing but 5 is nothing but 0, 1, 0, 1. That is 5. 6 is nothing but 0, 1, 1, 0. And 3 is nothing but 0, 0, 1, 1. So th th that is a, that is a encoding in BCD format. Right? So uh, this is basically known as binary coded decimal. And there is a lot of questions in your JTO exam uh, question papers 
regarding BCD. So remember this particular scheme, BCD representation. And also XS3 also, it's a very popular scheme, XS3. And there is a very distinguishing feature which makes it very popular. And that, that particular feature is this one. See this one. Let, let me ask you this one. What is the comp? What is the earlier I told you about the ninth complement, right? Ninth complement of ninth complement. Now, what is the ninth complement of zero? Can you tell me what is the ninth complement of zero? It is nine. What is the ninth complement of one? What is the ninth complement of one? Eight, right? What is the ninth complement of two? Seven, right? And similarly, you can you can find the ninth complement. Of, I mean, you can find the ninth complement of three, six, right? You can you, you can get it like this. Now look at this one. Uh, look at this one. This is zero, and the ninth ninth complement of that one is what? The ninth complement of that one is exactly this one. Now, do you see something very striking here? I mean, the ninth complement can be obtained by just inverting the bits. See, if you invert zero zero one one. If you invert the bits of 0, 0, 1, 1, you get exactly 1, 1, 0, 0. So in XS3 format, if you invert the bits of a particular number, if you invert the bits of a particular number, you get the ninth complement of that number in that particular scheme, in that particular number scheme, right? And look at this one. What is the, if you invert the bits of this one, you will get the ninth complement of that number. Now, if you try, in, try inverting the bits of this number, what is the invert inverting of this this number bits of this number? You will get this, right? And that is exactly the ninth complement. So in XS3, the ninth complement can be obtained by in XS3. Ninth complement can be obtained by. Obtained by. Inverting the bits. Inverting the bits. And any code satisfying this property, any code satisfying this particular property is known as self complementary code. Please understand, very important one. Competitive exam, or reward on a social question. Any, any code. The ninth complement can be obtained by inverting the bits. So if any code satisfies this property, then such a coding scheme is known as a self-complementary code. self complement You have to remember this word. Self-complementary code. And is BCD, is, is this one self-complementary? Is 8421 BCD, BCD encoding? Is it is it self complementary? No, please understand. It is not self complementary. And one more thing is XS3 a positional weighted system? Is it positional weighted system? Is XS3 positional? Is there any is there any weight to this position? I mean, it's just a rep representation, right? Zero is represented by just zero, zero, one, one using some random rule, right? There is no position weight assigned to the position. So XS3 is not a positional weighted system. Please understand that. Even BCD for that matter, only these symbols are position weighted. But when you go to the higher numbers like 143, th there is no position, position weight anymore. The only the indiv individual symbols have position weights, but when you go to higher number representations, it is not position weighted, right? So XS3 is not a positional weighted system, and the uh, the uh, you you can be asked a question like this: which is a non non position non weighted system, non weighted number system, which is self complementary? I mean, your answer should be XS3, and one of the options will be XS3, right? You should remember that, right? And one of the other, I mean, uh, one of the other, uh, one of the other, I'm not writing this one, which is because it is not very popular. One of the other self complementary coding scheme, there are ma many self complementary coding scheme, but still this one, this should also you should remember self complementary coding scheme. 
which is actually weighted which is uh, coding scheme is which is known as 2421 code 242 this is actually position weights please understand 2421 code okay so i mean this is also self complex please remember if you in your options in the options if you find 2421 code please understand that is also self complement okay i am not right i am not writing all the encoding but you can actually see that it, it will be self complement so 2421 yeah so just remember this word actually self complementary format then one more thing regarding this bcd one one more thing which can be asked in your question in your questions is uh, say let us look at a bcd addition what happens in bcd addition right say so i am talking only about bcd addition say suppose i want to add two numbers say uh, say something like 10 um say one zero maybe not one zero one one no. uh zero one uh zero one one okay and not one zero one it is one zero 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 okay and one zero zero one okay so the two bcd numbers these are two bcd numbers two bcd numbers And when you suppose you add them using the normal binary addition, suppose you add them using the normal binary addition. So now before that, let me ask you what, what is this number represents in BCD format? What is this number? 1008. What is this number? What is this number in BCD? It is 9. So what is the result you are expecting after the addition? The result you are expecting in BCD is, I mean, 70. And what is the representation for 17 in BCD? The representation for 17 in BCD is 1 will be encoded as what? 1 will be encoded as 001. 7 will be encoded as what? 7 will be encoded as 011. So this is the answer you are expecting. So when you add two BCD numbers, the answer you are expecting is this one, if it is a valid BCD addition. But you may not have a BCD adder rightly in front of you. So maybe you add it using the normal binary arithmetic. What is the result you are going to get? So here you will get 1, right? So this will be 0, this will be 0, and this will be 0, right? And this will be 1. Now you can add 0 here if you want. And what is this number actually? The, the, suppose, suppose you in, interpret the result as B, valid BCD. What will this number represent? Actually, this will be this will be read as what? This will be read as a one. This will be read as a one, and you will be treating this one eleven as eleven as the answer, which is a wrong answer, right? So the this actually results in a, uh, a wrong wrong BCD result. I mean, this is not the result we are looking for in the in the BCD addition. If this has to be uh, uh, represented as a, if, if this has to be interpreted as a valid BCD. You will you will interpret it as eleven, but that is that is a wrong answer. You are actually expecting seventy. So there is something which has to be done to make it into a valid BCD or the valid result. So how will you move from how will you move from this to the valid result? How will you move from this one to the valid result? So you can see that suppose you add suppose let me add a six to this one. Let me add a six. So add six, right? So add a six to this one, right? And let us calculate this this answer, not to this one, this one. So what will happen here if you add a six to this one? This one is one, this is one, this is one, this is zero, and this will be one zero zero zero. And this is if you interpret this one as your BCD number, this actually matches with this, right? I mean, this is 70, right? So uh, the actual result you are getting was not a valid BCD. I mean, the result you are expecting. But in order to con in order to convert from normal, I mean, the wrong result to the actual BCD, you have added some factor, and the factor you are adding is known as a correction factor. So you are adding a correction factor of what? What is the correction factor added? You added in BCD addition. 
the correction factor added in BCD addition is what? 6. Binary 6. So please remember this one. This is a very important. Uh, this can be asked as a question. Right? Right? That is uh, correction factor used. Correction factor used in used in BCD addition. is binary six i mean six is basically six and when i say six basically you are using the binary of six okay so just just remember they, they may directly ask you this question so just remember this one correction factor used in bcd addition is six okay fine so we have discussed uh, some of the things which are very much required for your exam and uh, I think almost most of the topics required for your exam is from number systems is almost over, right? Uh, yeah. So I think we'll discuss uh, some questions on this one. Okay. Let's see some questions. Uh, correction factor on. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. No. A correction factor is not for only numbers greater than uh, uh, 15. No, no, no. See this one. Uh, there is a lot of rules behind that one, but uh, I didn't find any detailed question on that one. That is why I, I was skipping that. So see this one. Say, uh, suppose I add 8 plus uh, 5, right? So what is 8 plus 5? 8 is what? Basically 1, 0, 0, 0. And 5 is uh, basically 0, 1, 0, 1, right? Now, when you add these two, you will be getting something like 13. And 13 has to be represented in, uh, uh, yeah, 2, 4, 2, 1 is, uh, yeah, weighted. It is weighted. Right. I mean, in, yeah, 2, 4, 2, 1 is, uh, is weighted. Yeah. Now, the, this 13, what is the representation for 13? Represent, representation for 13 in BCD? It's 0, 0, 001 and 0, 0, 001, 1, right? So this is the representation in BCD, right? But if you add these two using the normal binary, what, what are you going to get? You are not going to get the not going to get this one. You will be getting something else, right? And what you're going to get? You will be getting the binary for 13. And what is the binary for 13? 1, 0, 1, 1. It will be 1, 1, 0, 1. Right? 1, 1, 0, 1. Now, is it a valid? Now, first of all, you need to think. See, uh, the correction factor has to be added for numbers greater than when the when the number is greater than not 15. When there is a, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you the rules for that. First thing you need to check is that is it a valid BCD? Is this a valid BCD? Is this a valid BCD symbol? There is four bits. Is this a valid BCD symbol? Is this a valid BCD symbol? No. Now, whenever it is not a valid BCD symbol, that is, if the result is greater than 9, if the result is greater than 9, definitely it will be what? It will not have a valid BCD symbol. Whenever it is not valid BCD symbol, immediately you should be adding what? Immediately you should be adding the correction factor to make it into the valid, valid BCD. So what will happen if you add correction factor of 6 here? This will be 1. This will be 1. This will be 0, this will be 0, and this will be what? There will be a 1 here, right? And you can add zeros here, and this will be the answer you are getting, right? So not only for greater than 15, you have to add, yeah, uh, even if it is not a valid BCD digit, you have to add the correction factor. And one, one more thing, just, just to add to this one. Suppose you want to add something like 69 plus uh, in BCD, 69 plus something like, 78 or something right in bc so how will you add this one in bcd say what is it uh, how will you represent 69 in bcd tell me this one 69 in bcd it is uh, 0 uh, 110 and 9 is what 9 is 1001 right and plus and what is 78 78 is encoded as 0 111 right and what is this 8? 8 is nothing but 1, 0, 0, uh, 0, right? Suppose you add this using the normal bi binary, what happens is that 
this is 1, this is 0, this is 0, this is 1 plus 1 is 0, but there is a carry, right? So there is a carry of 1 here. Now, if there is a carry, see, please understand, if there is a carry of 1 here. Now, when you look at this one, this is a valid BCD number. Please understand, 0, 0, 0, 1 is a valid BCD number. But you should not take this one as the answer. Why? Why you should not take this one as the answer? That is, if there is a carry generated from this particular point, then obviously that is not the correct answer. That is not the correct answer in BCD. So immediately you have to add what? You have to add a correct, I mean, you can, you can simplify this one also. You can simplify 1 plus 1 is what? 1 plus 1 is 0. This one is what? Uh, this one is 0. Sorry, this one is 1 plus 1 plus 1. This one. Uh, this is 1. This is 1. And this is 1. So you will get a result like this. And now let me ask you this one. Is it a valid BCD, first of all? I mean, first of all, is it, uh, this is a valid BCD. But you have to add a correction factor. Why you have to add a correction factor here? Please understand. This is a valid BCD BCD valid BCD symbol, but there is a carry from this position. So you have to add a correction factor of what? You have to add a correction factor of 0, 1, 1, 0. So what will that result in? This will result in 1. This will be 1. This will be 1. This will be 0. Now look at this one. This result, does it represent a valid BCD? Now, there, there is no carry. Please understand, there is no carry from here. There is no carry from here. So, that rule is not applicable here. If there was a carry, then you, you should have applied the correction factor. But here also, is it a valid BCD? It is not a valid BCD. And even if it is not a valid BCD, then also you are, you are required to add what? Correction factor. Now, what if you add the correction factor here? 6, 0. This will be 0. Uh, this will be 1, this will be, this will be what, uh, 0, and there will be a carry here. This, this carry you can, you need not worry about. I mean, th this is the final answer, right? The final answer you should be getting is something like 1, and what is this symbol? Can you tell me what is this symbol? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, did I make a mistake here? 9, 7, 8. Uh, Seven, eight, one. This is yeah. This is four, right? One, four, and this one is seven. Now, is that the answer you are expecting? After adding sixty-nine plus seventy-eight, nine plus eight, seven, uh, and this is one forty-seven, right? So you are expecting one forty-seven, and you are getting one forty-seven. So did you understand when to add the correction factor? Have you understood when to get when to add the correction factor? I hope it is clear, right? Okay. There are two two scenarios in which you you should add the correction factor. One is you have a carry from the last position. The other one is when the resultant is not a valid BCD symbol, right? That, that is the two cases in which you have to add the correction factor of six. And correction factor is always six, right? And yeah, I mean, okay. Not uh, we will not go into the uh, details of that. That that is fine. Repeat once. Uh, yeah, Saroja, uh, which one to be repeated? Which which particular thing has to be repeated? Or can can I do it just after the class? Uh, after doing the questions. Okay. So uh, let me finish with the questions first. Then we will take the uh, doubts. Okay. So let's see. There was some questions on these. Okay, so uh, so this question was actually asked in Kerala sector uh, in 2013 uh, for JTO. The two's complement of the binary number 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 is. So this is the binary number. So what is the two's complement? Two's complement. So you can start from here and scanning towards the left and yeah, you got the answer already. Okay. So it is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, right? So the, basically this one is that. So the answer is uh, this one, option B.
All right. Oh. Next one is the binary coded decimal system. Binary coded decimal system is nothing but BCD. Binary coded decimal system makes use of a series of dash bits to represent a decimal number. So, what is a series of bits used to represent a decimal number? That is 4, right? So basically, it's a series of four bits, nibbles, series of nibbles to represent the total number, right? So next one, which of the following is not a weighted value positional numbering system? So which one will be the best answer out of these options? I mean, it has to be the out of this options. I mean, this has to be B, right? binary coded decimal. I mean, there can be an argument that in binary coded decimal, at the symbols are actually position weighted, but uh, on the whole, it is not position weighted. Uh, all the all the others are actually position weighted system. That is another thing. So in eight four two one BCD code, in eight four two one BCD code, the decimal number one two five is written as one two five. So 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1. 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0. 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. Right? So which one is the answer? Which one is the answer? Is it B? Option B. Right. So I think that that's it. I mean, those are the these are the questions I, I, I could collect from all the number system part uh, in your there were around a lot of uh, 20, 22 question papers. So the, these were the questions I could see from number systems. I mean, there, there were two questions in every paper some, and some questions are very simple. So I haven't selected them. OK, so I think that is uh, with that one we can actually conclude uh, number systems uh, as of now and if you have any doubts you can actually ask me okay so i think uh, the, 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 this is where i wind up this class actually any uh, summary for two classes uh, summary is basically we have discussed about how to decide a valid bcd okay so yeah uh, we'll look at that we will we'll take that question how to uh, get a valid how to look for a valid BCD please understand whenever the number you are getting if you are adding two numbers if the number is between whenever the number if the result of addition if the result of addition the result of addition is between between 9 and sorry between yeah between 9 and 15 9 and 16 or is from 10 to 15 now 10 to 15 uh, definitely obviously will not have any valid bcd codes this will not be this will not represent a 10 to 15 binary i mean 10 binary this will not be a valid bcd code be a valid bcd result valid bcd result and you have to add the correction factor and what is the another scenario in which you have to add a correction factor so correction factor is required correction factor is required And what is another possibility in which uh, if the result is, uh, it's an in, uh, sorry, it's an invalid, yeah, it's, this will not be a valid, this will not be a valid BCD result, right? So it's an invalid BCD result. Now, if the result is greater than 15, the result is uh, greater than 15. Uh, and if there is a carry, if there is a carry from the 
uh, most significant position if there is a carry from the most significant position again the result will will not be the result will not be the result will not be will not be the expected one i mean the result may look like a valid bcd the result may look is in this particular case there is a carry from the msb the result will look like valid bcd digits but the result will not be the expected expected one expected result and a correction factor is required correction factor is required so you can try adding 9 9 plus 8 now if you add 9 plus 8 you you have to get 70 but when you add it you will get it as 1 1 i think 11 right so basically it is a valid bcd but there is a correction factor required because there is a carry from the msb position okay so uh, does that solve your doubt is it is it clear now is it clear okay somebody asked for a summary of the class uh, the previous two classes basically we started with number systems we looked at what we looked at different schemes of number systems hexadecimal all, all those kinds of octal and all other we looked at what is the base of the number system all those things the very basics then we looked at the conversion of the number systems like conversion from a uh, binary to decimal de decimal to binary and decimal to any base and binary to hexadecimal octal to binary so all the shortcuts also we have discussed about those things then after that uh, so and we discussed the questions regarding the most of the questions were uh, uh, with that one then today we have discussed actually yesterday was ba basically those basics and today we have discussed about first thing we have discussed is something like how to add two numbers in hexadecimal that is how to subtract the numbers in hexadecimal itself not not converting it into decimal you want to add the numbers in mm, yeah so then uh, that is basically the summary so uh, yeah today we have discussed and today's class anyway you were present actually right uh, can we have few problems based on sign magnitude uh, yeah i mean we can see basically the thing is that i have actually scanned through uh, almost 22 question papers of yours uh, uh, from different states i didn't see uh, questions regarding uh, sign magnitude there are very complex questions asked in gate and uh, engineering services exams but when it comes to jto i didn't see questions uh, to that particular level that is why i didn't discuss too much of questions from sign magnitude and now if you if you have any specific question you may post it in the group or you can yeah we can actually deal with that uh, and gray code uh, yeah I, i we will be discussing that when we look at the adders actually right i mean the arithmetic circuits i mean i mean i, I could have told it in number systems also but when we look at the uh, arithmetic conversion that is how to convert binary code to gray code i mean th that is a better place to discuss that and what are the uses of gray code i mean those things we can actually discuss during those that part uh, it will be a much better place to discuss that we'll wind up the session for today then if there is no more doubts i think we'll wind up the session for today okay so thank you thank you everyone thank you for attending